to And Here's Modi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Leo. Hi. Ariel. And we have a guest today. We have, uh, wait, we were going to also do the not right away guest thing. But yeah, I don't we, know. I we just can feel take a minute. I, I feel just like it's. You can take a minute. I okay. still have my mask on. Of course you do. Well, because now there's flu runa. Oh, sh- I'm just sh- oh yeah. shut up. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go into the guest. 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 Okay, so <laughs> we have a very special, special guest. I met you two years ago? Yes. Two years ago, before, before COVID and before Corona. Before Maybe even more than I two years ago. I started to follow you before COVID, right. yes. His name is Chaim, Chaim Handwerker. Handwerker in German, in Israel, and in the United States can be also Handwerker. It's your choice. Yeah, Handwerker, okay. Um, uh, and you're a writer, a real serious writer. So is Periel. Um, but uh, you have been writing for about 2,000 years now? <laughs> yeah, over 30 years. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Over yes. 30 years. It's more, but it's like ladies who try to keep the age as a <laughs> secret. <laughs> yes, so yes. I keep the years right, in journalism. Yes. It's more than even 30. Yeah, like, okay. well, like whenever I say I've been doing comedy since 1994, and you see people starting to do their math in their <laughs> head, like, holy cow, you know? Um, and then, um, but you, you, you've been, okay, so you, I know you because you do articles for Haaretz. Yes. And um, Can tell us, yeah. yeah, what I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a ha- Haaretz demographic. But, so you, 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 but you almost said it really well. Haaretz, yeah. Haaretz. Haaretz which means yes. the land, okay. the, uh, land. the land of Israel. And it's the liberal newspaper. It's Just describe, uh, tell us what Haaretz is. Haaretz like. is the intellectual newspaper of Israel. Okay. Uh, people will define it as a liberal left. Okay. Uh, it is true, but I would prefer to define it as uh, the more intellectual newspaper equivalent to the New York Times. And um, yes, we take our job seriously. Okay, so you're the, the, the but it's not just, it's, it's, it's all the news, it's not just cultural. It's, it's what I, I sit here in New York City yeah. and I cover the city. At times I will write about things outside of New York. Uh, but New York is the best city in the world and uh, it's really uh, an honor and pleasure. Uh, to be here and to cover this beautiful city. It, it is, and and you. And it's not like it's your f- you. You were obviously based in Tel Aviv for a while, and you were in Paris for a yes, stint. Yes. What was yeah. Paris? How, how long so were you there I, for? So uh, I, I was there for four years. Okay. I met also my wife. Oh. And uh, uh, but uh, in I started my career uh, in Tel Aviv. I covered different subjects from from police to to culture, uh, weekend magazine stories, um, little scandals. And then I went to study in Paris, and I was asked to stay there as a correspondent. Um, there I dealt a lot of with politics, uh, with, with European uh, politics. It was European v- politics with Israel or European politics? In, just, just in, general, in general, but including Israel. Right. And uh, what the beauty was, at that time, it was um, the beginning of the 90s. The, it was the end of the Berlin Wall, and the world was very optimistic. And right. I thought, wow, we are so lucky. What's that and like? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Berlin <laughs> Wall. Uh, <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, we have a millennial here, just so we keep yes, everything I, in I check. I know, I know. There was it was a period of time that we thought <laughs> the world can be so beautiful. Wow. And then later on, we find <laughs> out that That's it's nice. uh, um, not so beautiful. <laughs> but we are going to work very hard that things will be better. Yeah, and so I- and you, you always cover what's happening like with the, the Israeli angle of what's happening not there? Not always. Or just letting uh, Israel know what's happening uh, here? Basically, I cover, I cover uh, this. First of all, Israelis are obsessed about New York City. Yeah. Uh, they love, and justifiably, it's a great city. And uh, they travel to New York. This is one number one destination for is Israelis. Okay. And um, uh, it's, it's for many people all over the world, New York is the capital of the world. Maybe also for you. Yes. So um, they, know to, they want to know everything about New York. So it can be about cultural life. It can be about crimes. It can be even about your mayor, about American politics. It can be about... You know where to go, a good club to go to. It's so first of all, Israelis, you should know, are obsessed about every city. Any, w- I've never been to a city, a place, a ski resort, and you don't hear Hebrew somewhere. Yeah, it's true. It's you just always wherever you are, you just hear out of nowhere. I was in Val Terranza, Val Desert, very <laughs> chic, chic. It's a very funny story. I w- we were on the lift line, and everybody's standing there, very Europeany, very with the little ski poles. All of a sudden, 
you see three guys just tumbling down, skis flying everywhere. Boom, they landed and took out half of the line. And then the guy goes, voila, it's in the fila. Oh my God, what a fall. It sounds so Israeli. It was like perfect. It was in one of these resorts where like you ski from Zur from Switzerland into Italy and these <laughs> Israelis are there. And in New York, you hear Hebrew everywhere. But that, that's exactly the, the, the point here. Uh, many times when I write about whatever subject, I find an Israeli angle. Yeah. Now, it's true that I'm looking for it, too. But they are everywhere. Yeah. In every area that you go, you'll find Israeli. It, it's help, helping me a lot in my work because there's all, it's better for my readers to have an Israeli angle. For an, do you know that the, 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 the lady who is the, uh, the, the nightlife mayor of New York, I'm sure you heard about her, her parents are Israelis. Uh, so, so you Who's the nightlife mayor of New York? It's a real position. Oh. It's a real position. Um, Isn't that Lady Fag? Yes. It's no, uh, no, no, it's not oh my her. God. It's not her, but it's yes. she's I in her she crew. Is okay. the Someone, uh, you know, you, you are young people, can go, you Google her name. She's a lovely lady. Her parents are Israelis. She speaks Hebrew also. So that's, your, you that's your angle to get into it with her. Yes, but, but Wait, you know what? But they, I, I find them everywhere. <laughs> I really find them everywhere. In high tech, the, the city is now flooded with Israeli young people in your age. Um, uh, working in high tech. Hold on, uh, he, he waved at you too. He yes, goes, yes, yes, yes. In of your course, age, in he did your that. Age. <laughs> <laughs> Not in your age, Marty. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Not in my age. No, they are the CEO or they are maybe the. That's right. The investors. They are the That's investors. Right. Yes, yes. That's right. No, it's so, Ariel Palitz. Uh, Palitz, Palitz, yes. It should be Lady Fagger. Yes. Oh my and God, she is, by the way, you should invite her here to one of your Definitely. next uh, Definitely. events. Definitely. And, uh, because, you know, it's interesting that New York has a nightlife. Mayor, that's it's, uh, it's, I just my first the time blast you it. brought her. I'm not sure that I hope that uh, Adams will keep her. I'm, I hope so too. Yeah, um, so so you d that's an amazing thing. And they're and big travelers, and whenever Israelis. like whenever my, my cousin comes here from Israel, she always has a cutout of a newspaper or she you know clipped it in her in her um on her phone the top 10 things that whatever Haaretz or Mariv or wh whatever newspaper in Israel it writes that this is what you have to go see it's and these are probably the one of them was mine because right. that's what I do I'm trying to to uh, to bring to my reader to give them uh, the the best place that they can go to. Not the Empire State Building, right. not the Statue of Liberty, the, the coolest, the cutting edge place in New York City. And that's what I do. And, and this thing with chefs, You've interviewed a million chefs, from what I understand. Yes, yes. What is the obsession with Israelis and chefs? It's not so a normal thing. No, no, it's not normal. I think Israel today is one of the most creative places in the world for food. S uh, for example, you go in New York to, to a Greek restaurant, okay? Yeah. They'll serve you whatever the grandparents used to serve 100 years ago. I'm exaggerating, but it's a your yeah, comedy yeah. person, so that's what you do, exaggerate. Am I right? Okay. Okay. That's what you do. Um, <laughs> I don't know to be in trouble with you, but no, anyhow. No. <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, we are talking about that's what they serve you whatever their parents and grandparents used to serve. Israelis, what they do is because of the nature of Israel and the, the um, uh, melting pot of Israel, so they have, they, they mix all the time things. They bring one, uh, will uh, uh, mix uh, Polish food and Moroccan food. Doesn't work so well, but uh, <laughs> for, as an example. So they you, mix You everything. have gas and then you have guilt because you <laughs> have the gas. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, except. <laughs> that was a good one? <laughs> all right. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, first of all, there's a culture, very strong culture of, of uh, food in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, Israeli food was very boring. But I think also reality shows also play the role. It's relatively <laughs> bless uh, you. Oh, no, I'm yeah, getting nah. sick uh, now. <laughs> no, you won't. Yeah, I'm fine. No. He's immune. Uh, immune. <laughs> 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 so um, uh, I think that also the TV and the fact that chefs in Israel became superstars also helped to create an atmosphere of exploring exploring new things. So everybody in Israel, uh, in the past, they wanted to be uh, I don't know a, a pilot in the air force. Mm. Now no, they want to be a chef. chef. Insane. Yes. When you're in Israel and you're flipping through the channels, all you see is cooking shows. Yes. With every angle. This one has to cook with only uh, with, with a stick. This one has to cook <laughs> with that. That one has to do this. It's n no fire. Yes, fire. It's, in it's insane. But that's, that's but their thing. But part of the reason is that it is cheap to produce them. 
Yeah. It's not too, it's uh, not a Hollywood uh, a movie. Yeah. It's uh, just a cheap. But, but also, it's some of the best food in the world, really, Israeli. I, I mean, think so, too. The food in Israel and is on par with Italy, any sort mm. of... I think better. I think better, but, uh, and, and it's also, it's not just the cooks and the chefs, it's the food itself. Yeah. The cook, you're yeah. eating a tomato that was, that yeah. that's between being picked and hitting your, your, your plate is two days. It's not like here where it drove from Washington State all the way to New York. Yeah, and if you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, so, but, uh, but, uh, so we talked about food in Israel, but there's influence about New York City. Because what happened is that the, this, the fact that Israel is so creative brought Israeli food to New York. So in the past, you used to have a falafel in a bootke or something right, like right. this. But now the Israelis succeeded to take this Middle Eastern food that became more sophisticated in Israel, and you have more than ever um, Israeli restaurants. And um, uh, what's in your favorite? If you had to right now send somebody to an Israeli chef, Israeli restaurant, which one would it be? So I'll give you. I, so I'll, it's not so easy. It's easy to ask, but the answer is much more complicated because we, we people wow. we make things. Did more you hear complicated. that? Did you hear That's that? That's what we say. Wow. <laughs> we just make things more complicated <laughs> in life. <laughs> so the question: What you're looking? If you are looking for a party. Okay. okay, I would send you to 19 Cleveland. Did you go to 19 yeah. Cleveland? Yes. So there, it's, it's good. the food is good. It's the food's good. But but it's really uh, you feel like you are kind of in a Tel Aviv. Okay. Somehow, so um, that's <coughs> number one. If you want to um, uh, the baked goods of Israel, you have breads. Yeah. Breads is a very good. Ooh, have you been to Michaelis? Have you been to Michaelis, no, no. Michaelis in uh, Michaelis in the Lower East Side? I heard about it. I did wow. not go. I must yeah. go. Wow! Wow! That's wow! Wow! wow. Can you guys hear me? I can't hear. I yeah, can yeah, hear. I hear oh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. No, Michaelis. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. But uh, but uh, not but the chocolate babgat breads is is, is considered. Breads is pretty insane. But, but it's, it's a little bit more more complicated than this. For me, I love the babgat, but. I think it's too sweet. And uh -oh. I'll tell you a little story why uh -oh. it's too sweet. And you know, I think they're, do, they're doing a great job. When, sh um, uh, for example, French chefs, when they come to New York, yeah. apparently they pour sugar into the baked goods. And there's a reason. Because Americans, yeah. they love sweet yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 so yeah. if you eat the same thing in Paris, the same thing in New York, here it will be sweeter. Why? Because because we're fat. Because, because no, there's not a you, sugar addiction. Not yeah, you. it's a sugar. There, there's it's a, a sugar, sugar yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but uh, we didn't finish. Uh, you asked me a question where to go. <laughs> Today, I published an article, and it's, they translated it also to English. Normally, they don't do it. About uh, the re a restaurant that you heard about, maybe you, uh, you had difficulty to get a table called Shuket. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about Shuket? Mm -mm. I think Shuket, no. You're, guys, you I are think so no, 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 That's no, no, why we brought no, no. That's why we brought you. Me. That's Wait, why we brought I you. I think my husband has been there. He's a real, he's Israeli, first of all, and he's a real foodie. And okay. So I think he has been there. Shuket. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I'll tell you the story about Shuket. The beauty about Shuket, they've also a restaurant called Shuka. Shuka is in Soho. Yes, oh, yeah, that yeah. yeah. You that's know. Down the block from 12 chairs. Yes, yes. but Shuket is better. I, I, Shuket, Shuka is good. Shuket is excellent. I now, yeah. what the chef behind Shuket, the people who told me about it, that it's, um, uh, it's an Israeli restaurant. Right. Uh, so I started to investigate. You say it's not so complicated. And I found the chef named Aisha. Aisha, Aisha, Aisha uh, a father used to be Muslim, a mother Catholic, mm -hmm. a, Italian. And the father is from Indonesia originally. And um, she created a very creative, uh, creative food, Middle Eastern food, okay? Now, before she opened Shuket, she visited twice in Israel to learn from the, uh, the first time she went there for a wedding, then she came especially with the owners of the restaurant with the purpose of trying to take the tastes of Israel to integrate it into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now, she will tell you it's not an Israeli restaurant, but you find Hebrew in the menu, you find even in the toilet when you go there, there are different kind of um, <laughs> uh, pictures about American movies written in Hebrew and dishes from Israel, from Shuka Carmel and from East Jerusalem. So in a way, it's not an Israeli restaurant, but here you have an American person goes to Israel to create something like Israel. For example, they serve the gazos. Gazos, you know what gazos is? Yeah. You know gazos? Uh, you can fill me in. Okay, so gazos is a, a kind of sparkling uh, water. Uh, water. 
I don't like it. Okay. But but in seltzer, it's like a seltzer. Like okay. a seltzer, Israeli version of the seltzer. So she calls it gazoz, or she calls uh, she calls f- things on the grill. She co- call it ala ish. Okay, ala ish. It's what zahav in Philadelphia. Did you hear about zahav? No. Ala, ala ish means wow. on the fire. On the fire, on the fire yes. But, but on the know, grill, on the yes, fire. Yes, but this is um, it's guys. Like I need to teach you about food in New York. I'm sorry. That's Wait a uh, second. We haven't gotten a word in edgewise. Yeah, I yeah. I, 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 I can tell. Sometimes, so, sometimes <laughs> I usually take half an Adderall before we do this. <laughs> <laughs> I did not need to take anything today. I have an ADD Chaim probably. Is on a fire tonight. <laughs> and we haven't yeah. even gotten to the real yeah, reason I we yeah. brought him here. First yeah. of all, there's, there are a lot of other amazing Israeli restaurants yes, yes, yes. around the corner from 19 Cleveland. Sh- shushi or? Uh, a shushu. 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 I, wrote, I wrote about all of them. Okay. Shushu is a great restaurant. Yeah. And I would I'm suggest- on top of my Israeli food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You have in, on the Upper West Side, you have Dagon that just was yes. open. New York Post said that it's the best thing that happened to the city since the, the COVID. Let's not get carried my away, God. but it is what? good. I, I agree with you, but, you know, I want to give Zizi, respect. Zizi's Zizi, really yes, good. Zizi, Zizi, I <laughs> give them a lot of respect. There is a Bustan on the Upper West Side, which I love. This is yes. this, the guy there, the chef, for example. Every word, you see, between us, I don't care many times about but the food. It's not between us, it's between us and all the listeners. And so like so we're talking into. He, t- <laughs> he turns the mic away <laughs> and he's, he's pitching to Leo what <laughs> Israeli restaurants to go no, to. No, it, it, it needs education a little bit about food in New York, I think, Leo. You're not insulted, am I right? I'm not insulted. What about no. Miss Nun? You see, Miss Nun is also very good. It's a very Israeli yeah. place, no well, doubt been about to it. Known. Yeah. Yeah. But, so just a second. Um, in. in um, uh, in Bustan, for example, the chef there used to be uh, the uh, the kind of the y- r- right hand of a super famous Israeli chef, and he came here and he basically brought the uh, the spirit of this chef from Israel to the Upper West Side. People right. don't know this story. Okay. And which restaurant is this? It's Bustan. called Bustan. B U S T A N. I'm gonna have to do like a whole list of a Google. Uh, of re- the yeah. I'm recommended Israeli yeah. restaurants, That's and I'm gonna post it on your Instagram and have yeah. people find it. I'm recommended. Yeah. 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 I'm recommended. Yeah. Yeah. But one day, whenever I will not write, my dream is so to go to choose fruit and vegetables where to buy the. F- to go specifically for in Americans New York? in New York. Okay, so oh, we're going to do... Please tell me. Okay, well, no, I don't want us to get sidetracked, but that okay. I could talk about. That I, could, I know in in, uh, in Brooklyn where the Syrians buy their food. Ori, Ori? Yeah, that Right, we went, nuts. each tomato's $400. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane, but it's but a it's beautiful tomato. it's like tomato. in high def. You're like, did Pixar make it's this a, tomato? Yeah, it's really... I didn't really get so we're gonna do. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to make a top yes. five Chaim picks mm-hmm. yeah. and let all the viewers and people yeah. fight about what they if they think he's right or wrong or what they think. Okay, but yes, but to come around yeah at the best Israeli restaurant in the city is? might be the Olive Tree. Oh, oh. which one? <laughs> which one? Which one? The, the <laughs> 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 Sorry, the Olive Tree the olive does tree. have ah, yes, good. By the way, it gives it to you. By the way, really inspired food. I, I, by the way, it's going to be better and better. I don't. Know. We well, okay. So here's the st- okay. The Olive That's Tree. That's my sources told me that the, the, the Olive Tree. The Olive Tree. Correct. The Olive Tree is the restaurant above the Comedy Cellar, owned by the which same is people. the reason we brought you here. By the way, perfect. Uh, we just got sidetracked by um, with the restaurant. But the course. Olive Tree, I've been eating there since 1994. I'm doing math in my it, head. Since <laughs> 1994, you guys. The, first of all, the Olive Tree was always a good restaurant. They used to have the kitchen in the front when you walked in. There was this Arab guy with a big, huge knife cutting the meat off the... Shawarma. The sh- but like it was a shawarma uh-huh. with the chicken, was all that. It was a... Cri- and they ca- and they keep evolving. And whatever you tell Norm, the owner, he listens. He makes changes. He just revamped the menu. And there are such amazing things on it. The... The, the squash. squash. The squash. The, the cauliflower. The, cauliflower, the, the hummus the now is really... The, the hummus went up like a full three, yeah. four notches. Yeah. Yeah. And the falafel and all that stuff is really good. And the reason we really brought you here today, yeah. obviously, is mm-hmm. because you wrote an amazing article about the comedy seller. And I'm going to tell you something. You... Firganta. Uh, you... You get correct credit. You not credit. How do you say F? How do you, how do you dis- le forget? Le forget. There's no word. There's no word. The you gave it to him. You g- instead of like holding back something, you you said this is an amazing place. Let me not tell you it's an amazing place and tell you also what's wrong with it. He just gave it. He just gave it. Um, 
and I was so honored to be mentioned in it. And it was, it was Louis C.K., Chris Rock, Seinfeld, Ray Romano, and Modi. That was. And here's Modi. And here's Modi. And and um, and it it and it's an it's I, I'm gonna say it's an Israeli business. Yeah. Well, so first of all, outside the cellar, it says Menachem Dwarman's <laughs> olive tree. Right. W- yeah. And which like is beautiful stained glass. It's right? beautiful. beautiful. It yeah. looks like um, Chagall. And Menachem Dorman, who began the olive tree, and he had the, the club. The we cellar. spoke about it before, the, the Café Wa and uh, Café Finjan, and then the Comedy Cellar came from uh, a room that was underneath, and they put it together. And he is born in Israel and came to America when he was seven, exactly like me. And he uh, and he created this 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 environment, and it's his son runs it now. And Esty, the woman who books the talent there, is is 100% Israeli. Her ex husband used to play in the band of the Cafe Finjan, and that's he wrote an article that was just amazing about it, and it was so true. It's and um, how did you find? How did you like? It's 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 when you Google top ten things to do in New York, the comedy sellers right there. Okay, Yankee so it's Stadium. Wha- wha- why do you think the comedy seller is so special? What made you first of all? This uh, article? Let's start with uh, that. I think that I really love comedy, because my feeling is, and I'm not a comedian, that comedy many times comes from pain. Well, okay. we can't unpack that right no. now. Uh, you are not impressed I don't with have me that in me right now. I, think I, d- I don't have that no, in me right okay, now. Okay, okay. So I, it, it might not come from pain too. Okay. It might just come from hey, let's see what we can make people laugh with. Uh, that, that, <laughs> but okay, <laughs> but but I met comedians that. I think that uh, comedy helped them. A hundred percent. Okay. So, um, and of course, I have an interest in it. And of course, I heard about comedy se- the comedy seller, like everybody. And then, like I told you in the beginning, Israelis, you find them everywhere. Okay? Yeah. And then I found out that behind the com- amazing comedy seller, the, the institution, you have also Israeli names. And I said to myself, it's not anymore just a New York institution. You have also an Israeli angle to this story. Right. So it's a good combo of the combo of the two of them. Uh, so that's that's number one. So of course I have a story. It's an institution, an Israeli angle, and then um, I heard also from ab- uh, many uh, people how they enjoy being there. They feel that it's a very authentic, very New York. Many times when you go to comedy clubs, mm-hmm. you feel that it's really it's business, which is their comedy seller. The comedy seller is business too, but you feel there's a little bit it's a vibe. neshama, nesh spirit. Yeah, so there's, a, yes. there's something different. That the comedy is what's it is the number one thing that they're there for. It's there's a special love right, to it. Right. So um, that's it. It took me a long time uh, to get there. They didn't cooperate with me so fast. You are the person, the reason that I got these interviews. Right. And it started, maybe I, w- maybe I can talk about you a little bit also. I saw Modi a uh, couple of years ago in an event in New Jersey. And oh, right. we were sitting and laughing our heads off there. <laughs> because um, the beauty was that, first of all, he was funny. And he knew to talk to this Israeli crowd that Israelis normally don't give donations, but there was, <laughs> there was an event that they gave money. So um, Modi was one of the ways for them to take more money from the Israelis, and they probably they did it. It was Berosh, um, It was uh, larger than life. Larger than life. It's a beautiful organization. It's one of the most the amazing organizations. They, they take kids in Israel who have st- up to stage four cancer, and they give them trips all oh over the God. world. Like the Israeli Make a Wish Foundation. It's like right? these, but more. They really bring these are kids who sometimes need, need a doctor and a nurse to travel with them, and they bring them. And they, it's an unbelievable organization. And I was on stage with one of the kids, oh, yeah. and yeah. it was yeah. a whole. And here's yeah. Modi, and oh. um, and it was an amazing event. And that's where you, you and then you reached out to me. Yes, and, it yeah. was. At first of all, the event was moving, and then we were we were supposed to cry. So we kind of cried a little bit, but then Modi came and made us laugh. Right. And then I said to myself, I need to follow this Modi. And, um, but I'm not done with him. He thinks that I'm done ah. with him, I'm not. <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the beauty of Modi, uh, Mo- Mo- Modi I say now, okay. Modi is that um, he knows to talk to every crowd in this his or hers language. And um, so, for me, it's a story, and of course, there's an Israeli connection, Jewish connection, but it's not too much. So, and also, you, you perform in front of 
regular New Yorkers. So goyim. Goyim, yes. Goyim. I'm, I'm not using this word, but it's, it's, Why a, legitimate. Not? it's, it's a, a legitimate. It's, it's a, legi- a legitimate. It's a great word. It's I, a legitimate. Nations. Legitimate. I perform in front of nations. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So anyhow, um, so, uh, in the, through Mo- uh, Modi, later on I got to the comedy seller people that I tried for a couple of years before. They did not even answer my emails. Right. So, but it's okay, I have a lot of patience. You have to understand, everybody's reaching I, out to them. I Everybody understand. reaches out to them. So they have to vet who, who's real or not. I, I learned after so many years in journalism, never take things personally. Right. Yeah. So I what I know, the, the trick is, I can, I can talk to you as young people, your today is my. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the trick is always never take things personally. Yeah. And you always, if you really want to do it, there are ways that you can get to every person on earth if you want to. I agree. And if you are willing to invest the time, mm-hmm. the effort, you can do it. And this is an example that he took, uh, took me a couple of years ago until I met you. Right. We were sitting together a few times. And um, and um, that's you opened for me the the door the window that was it. I'm glad it was such a it's such a it's it's such a story that needs to be told, and um, they and need to translate the piece into English too. It's the hardest thing. First of all, you sent me the link. Yeah. Unless you subscribe and unsubscribe and bisa and a year less pay wall money. Wow! 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 You can't. It's Luckily, about to to this podcast. but guys, I want to FYI. explain. It. <laughs> guys, and now let's talk seriously. Let's talk seriously for one second. Newspapers need to make money. Okay, mm-hmm. the print has problems because people ha- don't have patience to spend time and read. I went to go get it in print and yeah. found out that a month ago, Israeli newspapers stopped selling hard copies in America. That, that's possible, but uh, there's a way to do it. If uh, it's a lot of work, but let's talk about the the online version. Newspapers needs to make m- they need to make money. That's the reason New York Times and was a journal and the Post. All of them they need to charge. It's not very expensive. I understand it's not a newspaper that you, as somebody who lives in New York, want to buy t- uh, to read it every day. It's totally understandable. Right. Uh, but but. The media, the media is important. I know that it's maybe philosophy. The media is important for for, for our democracy. We know that today. Yeah. Because otherwise you get your flooded just with only fake news. Right. So the way that the media makes money is by subscription and by the advertisement. Advertisement goes down because Google and Facebook take most of it. That's the biggest competition of the print. Uh, but... So that is the problem. So I'm s- apologizing uh, in yeah, the name no, of uh, Aritz and everybody. No, no, I, I, just, I mean, obviously. But yeah. it's difficult, yes. But yes, I think it would be a good idea to translate it. I'm willing to ask the newspaper to try also to make an effort and translate it. And um, What's funny is, is that Noam emailed the piece to my husband mm-hmm. and said, can you translate this for me? This piece came out in Haaretz and... Will you translate it? And then I and then he showed it to me, and I saw you, and I was like, "Oh my God, that's so exciting!" I I called you and went over. I translated the piece about <laughs> me. I want to. That's like the most important. The, uh, the, the oh. whole no no exactly. <laughs> come on no. It was an amazing piece, and it yeah, really spoke about it. But, but the piece about me, I said, I'm, I, I got to hop a quote out of there. I got to grab a quote. So I was, since you and Leah were are like always great with the PR stuff, I said, like, "What's my quote gonna be?" And you said in it, you said. Uh, Honey, eh? First of all, it is always one thing that goes wrong. I, I've built my entire career working on Modi and only Modi. Of course, you say Modi Rosenfeld, da, 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 and then you kept referring to me as Rosenfeld, 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 Rosenfeld. Okay, so which is, uh, I guess, uh, a thing that journalists it's just do. A, a, a stylistic. It's, it's, it's a, you are right, but I'll tell you things from again. Nobody listened to us, so I can tell you. No, um, no people <laughs> listen to us. Uh, yes, That's that why we do okay. this. <laughs> <laughs> people listen to us. Otherwise, we wouldn't we wouldn't be setting this all up. <laughs> so we would just be in a coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah we would just be in a coffee shop. The truth of the matter. <laughs> we if, if people <laughs> 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 yeah, if people listen to us. That's we'll good. That's good. Coffee. No, no, I'm just joking. I'm trying to be a comedian for uh, for a change. Uh, but um, what happened originally when I wrote it, the article I wrote just only Modi, Modi. right? Uh, but the editors edited Modi Rosenfeld okay. because, and I didn't see the article before it was really printed. Oh, okay, okay. So because that is the correct way to do it, Leo, you're right. That's the way to do it. There's a, there's a, a way to do it. 
And that's, that's the reason they said it's a, uh, AP style. It's a style. Yes, it's Rosenfeld said Rosenfeld. Yes, so that's that is the story. Okay. So I they didn't don't do that. Like share yeah. and Madonna share Madonna. Yeah, because share and Madonna have yeah. people way more powerful than Leo. Uh, but apparently, they don't see you as Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but so here it is yeah. for, for all of our viewers. Right? Yeah. They w- yeah. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful article. There's a picture of Louis. Picture of Esty. Yeah, and, a and I took that picture yeah. on and my Leo took that picture. Did you get photo credit? And, um, oh, you did. I did get photo credit. Wow. Well, Thanks. Okay, so Thanks here's, time. Here's, the artic- here's the article. And you said, um, wow, okay. Can you I said, Modi Rosenfeld from the Moadon from 1994. Modi has performed in the, ni- it's in the comedy. I'm, I'm pretending I can see this. Let oh, see. my God. Hold on. Here it is. There we go. Um, well, the quote we used was, he goes, Hastan da pist, Yehudi dati amatzliach biyoter be'artzot abrit. Kanire, lo? Kanire. Kanire, oh, kanire. Apparently. Wow. I never, I, d- I never say hundred percent. Hundred percent. I need to edge myself. So it's funny. It's we, what we were discussing that we were discussing this. So it's, you're saying that the most popular. Jewish comedian, obviously the most the most popular, the most well known, the famous is Jerry Seinfeld. Even though he's Jewish, but his act we don't see him anymore in this way. It's a, uh, that's uh, we. Right, that's uh, he's what Jewish, I was but many th- only Larry David also is Jewish and uh, is a fantastic comedian. Right, uh, but uh, a, uh, he 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 doesn't do stand up. So you said stand the piece. Yeah. So, so okay. So you found. I mean, it's a, mis- a mistake, probably. So I said, except Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> no, Jerry. No, no. So that, that, that was the conversation we were having. No, it's, it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's a hundred percent. When you when you look at my comedy, this is a Jewish comedian. When you look at Jerry, he's a stand up comedian. Yeah. Who's happens Jewish. to be Jewish. Who happens to be Jewish? Mm. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, the New York Times said that you were the next Jackie Mason. Okay, right? but I like, like, like I like this more. You like this more. <laughs> <laughs> I like but this a lot. By the way, it's part of my. Uh, keep talking about. It. I'd like to speak with you a little bit. My visit on the set of Seinfeld many years ago. But keep talking, uh, and then we'll go back to. Seinfeld. I know I, you wrote that you want to visit. Talk about your visit on the set of Seinfeld. What, what was so interesting? So first of all, it was the first years of Seinfeld that yeah. it was really fresh. It was really original. It was. Um, it was fun to watch. I just came from the Uni- from Paris. And I said to myself, wow, this is funny. Im- uh, when I came to the United States... Wait, so you, you were in Los Angeles? I went to Los Angeles, yeah. to the studio. My host there was Je- um, Jason Alexander, okay. who is a fantastic uh, com- uh, com- uh, comedian, uh, actor, yeah. amazing com- actor. And unfortunately, we don't see him enough uh, on TV or on theater because I think when you see him, you think immediately about George. Probably that is the reason. Seinfeld made him a lot of money, but also probably killed his career. He has a theater there you to my understanding. come and kill mine too. I'd be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> Shecht my career. I'd be happy to be known as George from many Wait like a yeah. second. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Seinfeld was taped in LA? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I yes. yes. <laughs> of course. Are you kidding? No, I had no idea. Honestly, I didn't really click that for me. Either. I had no idea. I mean, of course Seinfeld it makes was sense. taped in LA? Yes, of course. A hundred percent. all New York. It all takes place That's in New York. That's so of course. Cr- Crazy! I it's had no idea. Yeah. I'd never seen. You needed Seinfeld. somebody to come from an all Israeli guy in New York <laughs> to tell you about. All the I establishing th- shots were in in New York, okay. and then you went inside. You were in the diner. The diner was in the studio. The apartment was in the studio. Wow. Yeah, 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 I yeah. never saw Seinfeld until my Israeli husband made me watch it not that long ago. So I, I never. I, I never. I never. It never clicked in my head. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, th- it's a phenomenon on levels no one could mm-hmm. have imagined. Right. It never clicked in my head, but uh, uh, I'm, you, he hit it. I remember, I can't you know, it was back in, in the day when he finished, when he finished the, the show and he checked <laughs> out. I feel so yeah. I do. Wh- when Jerry Se- uh, Seinfeld checked out, the show's over, we're done, we're leaving, we're, and he moved back to New York and he started coming back to the Comedy Cellar. Back then, I was still hosting. Yeah. So he would come on, and I came and tell you that the place would go wild. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome a special guest, Jerry Seinfeld. And he'd walk on, and the place would not know what to do with themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they stopped, and then he had to show it. And then he had to do his comedy. And at the end, he would take questions. He was very, very nice and very, very sweet about it. Um, so what did you learn on the set there? Yeah. So first of all, um, it was as somebody who loved the show so much, it, even it was filmed in LA, 
I felt really t- there in New York. Mm-hmm. And um, so, first of all, I, I learned that uh, actors are people. I know yeah, that it sounds... Inside the TV. Uh, yeah, yes, because you see them, and then you see them like normal people. They walk on the set uh, and uh, in a bad mood. I don't know if they were in the ma- bad mood, but smiling, not smiling. So, so first of all, you learn about the reality. Um, I had very interesting conversation with uh, Jason Alexander. Jason Alexander, who is really a fantastic, very smart person. And he then... He talked about the problem that he's going to have one day when the show is done. How is he going to, um, to a Broadway show? And he just came from Broadway. How is he going to, to, uh, to act? Everybody will see George, George, George. That was an issue, for example, that he raised. We're talking about an interview from 1994, 95. Wow. Wow. The really, that's a long time ago. I don't like to speak in these terms because you may say, oh, well, we brought here somebody from 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so, um, that's but, amazing. But, um, so, but it was really enlightening to see, to, to, to see the action there. Um, uh, yes, it was a big... Uh, but he's done things. He yeah, has yeah, no, actually he has. done a yeah, lot of yeah, things. And I never... I You're talking about Seinfeld, yes? No, no, no about uh, Jason, about Jason he Alexander. D- yeah. He did. But you don't... Before before Seinfeld, he was, uh, there was um, a musical in, on Broadway, um, something... Um, right, he, he, had, he had a career. Yeah, 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 he had a career. But I don't see him on Broadway. I don't see him so much. I, the, yeah... I so think he's out there. I think he's doing. I'm not looking okay. for him. I hope I'm that I'm. I hope <laughs> that I'm wrong. <laughs> well, uh, my, I, I, I think he's incredible, Jason. I really. Yeah. And he was just on. Um, I the the finale. The you know they brought it back when they yeah. kept the reunion show on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay. I think was absolutely brilliant. Because they were always saying we don't want to do a reunion show. Reunion shows are always terrible. And then instead of doing a reunion show as Seinfeld, they did it on Curb Your Enthusiasm, with Larry trying to convince mm-hmm. everybody to do a reunion show. Okay, That's I'm right. telling you this because I know you've never seen that show either. No, no we, I, I, I get around to it. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah, I get around to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what's what projects do you have coming up now? What's your next thing to? You did this amazing piece on the Comedy Cellar, and mm-hmm. now what's what what's how what long does a piece like that take you to finish from so start see, to when your editor, you know, makes the changes and submits so it? And you puts it in about the comedy seller, if you look at it, uh, let's say it was a couple of weeks, uh-huh. but I met with them a few times. I met with them with uh, Esty and Noam. I met with them before COVID, mm-hmm. wow. and I kept wait. I wait. You see, I have a lot of patience. This is the example of a serious newspaper. Basically, I was dragging this news, uh, this story. For the last two, three years, you right. can say. So, but is that normal for a piece? It's not normal, but I'd, I do it. I do it because I'm not in a rush to publish. I'd like to soak the story and to feel the story. And I met with them before COVID. I m- meant to be done with this uh, during the time of COVID, but it was closed. And then I met with them again uh, after, co- uh, after when the COVID come down a bit. And um, every, every meeting changing changing the, 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 the story. So in a way, it was a process of two more than two years, two and a half years. It's a lot of time. But I've done it before. There are times, there are stories that I meet people and I publish it tomorrow. There are times that it takes me six months also because it's a process. I want to also enjoy the story, mm-hmm. to learn that the subject. That's the difference between Schmearing and uh, and have you gotten any sort of reaction from people who have read the story so far about them, who ha- maybe people who haven't heard of the seller before? Oh, they they read the, uh, or people who read I told me that if they they'd like to go. Arts, they've already. Do you think they already know what the seller Many is? Many of them. You see, Israelis again. They've come to visit New York. If you visit New York, probably and you're more sophisticated. Uh, probably you heard about the seller. If you care about m- comedy, probably you heard about the seller and the comedy store. That's mm-hmm. the two places right. in the United oh, really? States. Yes. The comedy store. Okay. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. If you go to LA, that's what you have there. And I prefer the seller, but nobody listens, so it's fine. No, I'm joking. No, no. Uh, it's okay. Uh, but uh, but yes, that's the way that you. That's the two major places for for comedy also once one israeli knows about something <laughs> every everybody knows everybody knows about you're it right. yeah you're right that's you're so right. true yeah yeah 
So the so you the feedback you've gotten on the article was great. It's it's it was really great. Uh, people tell me that we'd like to go, we'd like to visit. Uh, uh, friends tell me, let's go together. Right. Uh, well, they, they usually say, oh, we were there, and and this and that stopped by, and he and him stopped by. Yeah. And so okay. okay. So what's the next big thing you're coming out with? By the way, if we are talking about if I'm here, I'm. St what's the about the plan? Your plan about age? Uh, we have a lot about any big big plans with you? Uh, I'm working on a, a special right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm honing down to, to do a special, yes. Okay. So, for example, at the time of a, a special, it can be our big story that we're talking about. Okay. That's, uh, so for me, it's work to be here today. <laughs> so it's work. Um, <laughs> it's um, right off. It's so right off. <laughs> um, so um, uh, my next story will be probably, um, first of all, I'm working at the same time on around uh, I'm 10 sure. stories. I'm 10 sure. stories. Yes, but this morning, I'm, I'm not supposed to speak about stories that I'm going to, to publish, but um, uh, there's a story that is waiting to be published about the issue of longevity. There's a scientist here by the name of uh, Neil Basilai, who one of the top specialists of longevity. And uh, today in the med medical world, world um, the, the whole idea of ling living longer, I know that we are busy with COVID, uh, so we think what will happen tomorrow. Busy with but COVID is amazing. Yes, but, <laughs> <memoir>. but, but <laughs> you know, there are scientists that work today on, on uh, longevity. They one day will be able maybe to live 120 yeah. years. And um, so... So this is this is basically the interview. The, okay. Uh, the, this is and the what's interview. what's his main? Give me his main his main thing. What's the main thing? Yogurt. What, I mean, what is it? No. Uh, <laughs> Jogging. What, what's what's the, his main? Is, for example, he talks about um, um, a diabetes me medicine, specific diabetes medicine that can. There are signs that it shows you that it can uh, prolong your life. Really. Yes. Uh, metformin. It's called metformin. Metformin. It's today. It's, uh, it's a medicine. You see, with me, you can talk about comedy, right? About right, right, everything. right, right, right. Metformin is a kind of the first first medicine that many doctors give to people with um, diabetes. Okay. What they found out is the people that um, use this medicine, it helps uh, them with other things too. So uh, they live longer than people. Even the people with diabetes, they are fatter. They have more problems, but with this specific medicine, they live longer. Still, it was not approved for this purpose by the FDA. People, but there are people, including doctors, who take this medicine for purposes of longevity. Look you better you. get Dr. Look K on you. the phone right but, now. Yeah, no. We've we, we got to bring him on the show, too. <laughs> yeah. Dr. K, he's, yeah. Is that that guy? He, he actually Steven? prescribes uh, medications that... Um, diabetes type of medication, the kind of pen, he says it helps you control your appetite and it helps you with all that. Probably it's metformin. Yeah. Probably it's the same thing. But now, there's another thing that he's talking about. Um, it's uh, the issue of diets. Um, the, the issue is fasting. Uh, it's the people of today will fast, uh, let's say, um, mm. eight, intermittent eight, fast. Yeah, intermediate this, this is, yes. That's today. The um, scientists and doctors talk about it seriously. Um, but you know what? We need to be careful with everything. Yeah. You see, a long time ago, I wrote a big expose, about 60 minutes. I spent time with them. I spent a lot of time with Bob Simon. He was killed in an accident later on. Do you know, did you hear about in Bob Simon? He was in a car. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt yes. in a taxi or something. You're, yeah. you're totally right, yes. And um, apparently 60 minutes made, um, uh, made the whole uh, story about the red wine, the French the, the, the red wine. And apparently in France, people live longer even they eat a lot of meat and fat and butter. And butter. And cheese. B exactly. That's and called the French pal paradox. Finally, somebody knows what I'm talking about. That's mm -hmm. called the French paradox. Okay. Yes. So uh, researchers start to understand what there is probably this secret in the red wine. And they found that there's a chemical called something with R. I forgot the name. It's too complicated for me. And um, 60 Minutes in the end, uh, let's say five, six, seven years ago, published a whole expose about this specific um, uh, a chemical uh, that uh, the red wine has that maybe it's the key for longevity. So then um, I met in 60 Minutes, uh, I mean, uh, what's his name? Um, he died um, maybe five years ago, uh, Morley Cypher, okay? Uh -huh. And he made this piece, and he was really a brilliant journalist. And, um, and I asked him, so what's going on with this specific um, chemical. Uh, chemical? And he said, oh, the whole thing, apparently it's a baloney. 
So, okay. Really? So we need to be careful when we talk about longevity and other things. I'm not Dr. Oz and I'm not telling you do I, one, I believe, two, three. I believe a lot of these yeah. things is m mostly in your head too. If you think I'm having this every single morning and it's going to give me energy and it's going to give me health and it's going to make me not want to eat all day, then it works. Yeah. It works. It's not a placebo, but it's a mental. I, but, I really believe in that stuff. But if you want to live longer, so first of all, exercise is important for your for your, your body, for your mental health. Right. It's, uh, it's good for, for everything. Uh, basically, when you go to, you have a problem, whatever problem you have, a doctor will tell you always ex go and exercise. Right. So I think there is a consensus about it. And I think uh, we have that one down, I think. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, no. I, 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 did a, I did an event one time for, for a fundraiser for Alzheimer and the Alzheimer's and the, the mo a, lot of the uh, a lot of the research happens in France and they said they really haven't found anything that's substantial except for exercise really helps. Well, I've read a lot about the, par the French paradox because people often push the Mediterranean diet and a lot of fish and lean meats and vegetables and things like that. And meanwhile, in France, they also live very long, but they eat butter and cheese and all this other things that usually we tell Americans not to eat. And it, they, they, there's no like co correlation or causation that they can find usually it's just because French people are less stressed and they just go about their day and when they do eat it's more ceremonial and they sit down and they enjoy the meal and it's in smaller portions yeah. and they talk and it's more with a person that they talk to they don't eat in their car they don't do fast food and right. things like that so they're eating uh, percentage wise more cholesterol or more fats and things like that that we eat here but the way they approach food and the way they have a social connection to food ultimately kind of like makes it you know, balances everything out. You're right thing. about it. And now we're going back to Israeli food. <laughs> uh, the Israeli food is successful in New York <laughs> as part of this phenomenon that you're talking about the Mediterranean food because it perceived it's healthier, kind of cleaner. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, it's, that's part of the reason yeah, that people... Yeah, it doesn't have all those chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Except one thing that I know that Israelis brought basically the f in many... Falafel, there was falafel in the city for many, many years. But the Israelis brought it really to the plate, to the plate in a restaurant. Mm. Yes. It was something you ate in a pita on the street, but they brought it to the plate. The problem with the falafel is, falafel is not health food because yeah. it's fried. Yeah. It right. cannot be. So if you go to Whole Foods, they bake it. Tasteless, but bake <laughs> it, so it's healthy. <laughs> but if you really want to eat the real falafel, it's fried. Yeah. Fried, even it's not meat, not healthy. Not healthy, Sorry. Yeah. Okay. But delicious. Yeah. Do you have a question? So we, we've, I think we missed it once, but uh, we, we always ask everybody, uh, all our guests, um, who's your rabbi? And not specifically your rabbi. If you're synagogue, but who do you go to for your spiritual, your guru? If you have a, your, maybe your writing guru, maybe your rabbi, rabbi, maybe what, who do you, who's your rabbi? Okay, so you know what? I'll give an easy, uh, I, in fact, I have a rabbi. I'm, um, you see, as somebody who came from Israel, I don't co perceive myself as orthodox, reform, or whatever, but a member of a reform synagogue. And the rabbi there he is Ami Hirsch, who used to be, he's half, half Israeli, used to be, also served in the Israeli army in a tank. And he has beautiful sermons, beautiful sermons, very smart, intelligent. So I would say that because it's a balanced view, um, it's intelligent, it's... He cares about Israel. Um, yes, I would What's say. What's his name? Ami Hirsch. Amiel Hirsch. Amiel Hirsch. He's, he's the rabbi of Stephen Rice Synagogue. I, uh, again, I'm, you see, I don't see, you see, I'm very skeptical about prophets, about uh, the Bible is, uh, is good, but uh, I'm, I'm not saying I have a guru. The, the Bible is good. You're, you're happy with, with, with that? <laughs> it was a good edition. It, it was, was a, a good, good edition. It was a good piece of work. <laughs> yes, you're, you're good happy piece of work. With it. Yes. Okay, but good. in no, today's we world, we have, I'm very now careful. we have we have an established, well-known uh, author who is happy with the work of God. And so he, you're, yeah. you're happy with that author. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, the pro my problem is not with God. It's what people do with God. Exactly. This is the problem. Exactly. Ooh, wow. Very That's nice. That can be another discussion. That's a whole discussion. Listen, I, we could bring you back for food, for for yeah. uh, you name it, whatever you want. Spirituality, yeah. for philosophy. You are an amazing Health. person. I'm. I, I'm, I'm ne definitely be something that we'll be in touch with and later on when I do the special and, and other things that are of, of interest. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. You, the article is amazing on in Haaretz. It's about the comedy seller. What's the title of the article? 
Uh, I need to see it uh, in my eyes. Okay. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm busy with my next article, so. Which is what? Uh, if I tell you, I need to kill you, but. Uh, okay. Okay, I, this is exactly the headline that I don't like. There was a, the <laughs> other that like, you see. Go ahead, <laughs> what's it called? Two Israeli, two former Israelis took um, kind of a, uh, a, an underground place and made it the, the Temple of Comedy of New York City. I think it's actually very good. Yeah, that's good. I, that thing's very the, good. The, other, the other headline <laughs> was more sophisticated and... Uh, um, I'll, but, I'll but, but your editor has to make a reason for his living. Yeah, no, no, but, but you know, they try to make it attractive. We compete today with, with, um, with, with Facebook, with the... Uh, Clickbait. Clickbait. Be, yes, wow. so yeah. uh, we don't have any choice. My sister's a journalist, and she's always harping to me about how she doesn't get to write the headlines. She doesn't like the headlines her editor chooses, yeah. and it's not her choice. And it so is true. It is whenever true. she sends me something she wrote, she's like, I didn't write this headline. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. It's so funny. How do we reach you? How do we get in touch with you? What's your handles on Facebook? Facebook, on Instagram, on anything? So you can find me on Facebook. It's um, Chaim Handwerker. Look for Chaim Handwerker. You'll find me there. Yep. But the best is Google. Just Google uh, Google my name, and uh, you'll find articles in English. If you, can, if you read Hebrew and write Hebrew, it will be even easier because there are many more articles in Hebrew. But okay. you'll find it. Whoever wants to find me, go to the phone book. I got you. Uh, <laughs> Chaim Handwerker, available on the yellow pages <laughs> under Chaim with an H, though, not, not a C-H. And you... <laughs> What's going on with you? You're doing your your show still. It's back up again. Well, no? well you changed the name. We you rebranded. Re well, right. uh, temporarily we changed the name. It's From a, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're on. It's on Thursday nights now. So at the at, at stand, stand up, up New, New York. York. Yeah. So it's called the Red Line. The Red Line. The Red Line. Vine. Line. Like the Red Line. 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 Okay. Line. line. okay, the Red Line. The Red Line. Oh, very nice. Okay, um, it's always a good show. People always show up there. Yeah, um, it's, a great it's fun, show. fun, fun outing. We're on um, Modi underscore Live on Instagram. Shows coming up. Yeah, uh, the twentieth in Boca. The twentieth in Boca. The Black Box in Boca. I'm going to be in Boca doing a tour of a whole bunch of communities and a bunch of theaters. But the show that people can get tickets to is the Black Box in Boca, and it's on my website, modilive.com, and also Modi underscore live. Uh, I'd love to see you there. Let me know you're coming. Let me, when you're there, say hi. It's a super casual place, super, it's a fun, it's a, it's a good, it's a good, yeah. it's a good place. And then in February, uh, West Side Comedy Club, in tw February 24th. February 24th, the West coming. Side Comedy Club, and there's a lot more stuff that's booked uh, a little further out, and we're in the middle yeah. of booking things now. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being a part of the podcast, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, cameos available if you guys need. We had a whole bunch before New Year's, and um, we love your feedback. Everything is great. Thank you so much, and uh, bye. 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 Bye-bye.